Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for another interview for you. And in this interview, I am interviewing Dr. Becky, and we are going to be talking about so many amazing things. She discusses how being over 50 is actually a benefit to her having a successful YouTube channel. She reveals how she's able to get over 100 new email subscribers a day from YouTube, as well as how she barely knows the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the YouTube algorithm and SEO, yet she still manages to have a channel that has hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of views. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I have video on YouTube, so make sure that you go on to my YouTube channel, Erica Vieira YT, or just search YouTube Power Hour in YouTube so that you can actually see the interviews and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel there and then also subscribe uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's iTunes or Stitcher. However you enjoy consuming this content, I've got it for you. And don't forget also that if you are someone who is looking to start or grow a YouTube channel, or maybe you feel uh, like you are stuck with your YouTube channel, I have a free masterclass, which I have distilled all the information that I've gained from interviewing hundreds of very successful YouTube creators, as well as coaching hundreds of YouTube creators in a one hour masterclass. So go to ericaviera.net forward slash masterclass to access the free class. So for Dr. Becky, a little bit about her. Her bio is she spent most of her professional career teaching a range of college courses from anatomy to nutrition. She now works full time helping people reach their health and weight loss goals through her Dr. Becky Fitness website and YouTube channel. She began taking her YouTube channel seriously the summer of 2017 and now has 237,000 subscribers and 13 million video views. Enjoy the interview. Mwah. Well, hello, Dr. Becky. Welcome to the hello. podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Erica. It's great to be here. Yes, I'm so excited to have you on. I found your channel. I don't know how I found your channel. I think I was like yeah. searching something about keto. I was like trying out the keto or mm -hmm. I, I do intermittent fasting and your channel came up. I'm yes. like, yep. oh, wow, yep. she's she's really interesting. Like she knows her stuff. So um, <laughs> I'm very excited to have you on the show. So why don't we go back a little bit and just give a brief, brief Cliff Notes history um, of you and your channel. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's funny to be interviewed for YouTube because YouTube, becoming a YouTube personality was never a goal of mine. It was never my intent. Actually, I started my YouTube channel uh, to uh, promote a, a program that I was starting on my website. And I, I had heard that, well, it's a good idea to put video, video out there. It kind of builds the trust and authority type of a thing. And so that is what I did. I, I just put a couple of videos up. I, that was back in like 2012. And honestly, Erica, I don't think I looked at my YouTube channel for another couple of years. And then when I did, I noticed that people were, were watching these videos. And I thought, hey, there, there might actually be something to this YouTube thing. So when you... Um Upload in 2012, you're just like, okay, I just have a couple videos to um, to support a program you're doing, or what? What was what was that all about? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I had started a blog mm -hmm. and uh, was was just writing about different things, and I had created this program. And uh, you know, it was in the early days. I mean, really, what that's eight years ago or, mm -hmm. or so. Um, that those are the early days. Life has been moving fast on the internet, uh, and I had read some things on how to blog effectively, and they said that blogs get noticed better on Google if you have a video attached. So I said, oh, okay, let me make a video. And so I made a, a series of videos with the only intention for, the, for them to be, to be embedded onto my, my blog. I didn't mm -hmm. really think that building a YouTube uh, audience was something that was in my future. Uh, I, did, I didn't even really know what that meant because that was actually probably the early days of YouTube as well. Yeah. And so these and, I'm pulling up on the screen. So for those mm -hmm. of you that um, are listening on the podcast, we do have our videos on YouTube now, which is really exciting because we can actually kind of show what our guests are talking about. So with Dr. Becky, 
Uh, I'm pulling up some of her oldest videos back three yeah. years ago, two years ago. Um, and so well, I think these are your most popular videos. Let's go to, yeah. let's go back back into some of your oldest videos. Okay, so this was seven years ago, right? <laughs> yes. So if, if you're watching this on YouTube right right now, you see that one with the pink uh, with the pink uh, uh, workout type yeah. shirt on. I, uh, Erica, that could possibly be the very first one I ever put up. And then that one right beside it is, is probably the second one. Food those, addiction. Are, those are the series that mm -hmm. I w had, had started with. Um, so it's, it's, it makes me kind of laugh to, to look at them now, but. So, so at what point then, I mean, this was years, this was years ago, right? And so, um, at what point did you say, okay, you know what? I'm actually going to take this YouTube thing seriously. Like there's something to this. What yeah. what happened? Yeah, so I, I kind of um I kind of got an inkling that boy there could be something to this, mm -hmm. at, at, you know after after they had been up and I noticed they were getting some, but I really I didn't there weren't a lot of uh, how to instructional things on how to create a YouTube uh, channel back yeah. then. I mean we're talking seven years ago, and uh, so I, um, I I kind of dabbled in it mm -hmm. for a while. Uh, I would put up a, a couple of videos and I'd be on a roll and then I'd get busy and distracted and I would take a couple of weeks off and, yeah. you know, and I would come back and, and, and uh, it wasn't until the summer of 2017 that I really started to take it mm -hmm. uh, seriously. And I will tell you what happened probably at that time is that I, a couple of things, I updated my camera equipment, which is kind of funny how I got started. We'll talk about that in a second, I guess, <laughs> but, uh, and, and then also uh, I put up two videos in the summer of 2017 that really took off. In fact, they're probably on my most popular list still. Okay, let's today. check those out. So uh, they would be the um, three ways to do intermittent fasting: easy, medium, and extreme. Okay. And also, uh, you the one right beside there. You've cut carbs. Now, what do you eat? Okay. And what I learned, Erica, uh, at that time in 2017 was that there is really something to picking the right title mm -hmm. and the right thumbnail. Now, now those thumbnails are old, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not like my, my new, my new ones, but they stand out. They have different color wording. You, you know, they have interesting words like, ex, you know, easy, medium, extreme, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it also taught me that it's not all about keywords, right? What, what to eat on a low carb diet um, or, or you've cut carbs. Now, what do you eat? Well, where's the keyword in there? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not low carb diet. It's not keto, which are kind of what we've been taught are the buzzwords, but it's intriguing. It's an intriguing title. Mm -hmm. And that taught me so much. And, and really at, at that time, which would have been the summer of 2017, I, I said, you know, yeah, this is, this is something fun, something I can really get a message out to a lot of people and it kind of went from there. So did you make that reali realization about the importance of your titles and your thumbnails prior to uploading these? And did you upload them with that intention or did you realize it after the fact? After the fact, mm. definitely after the fact. Okay. Um, and, and, but, but it's, it's uh, propelled me to this point. I, mm -hmm. I now think about my title before I have the video kind of conceptualized in my brain. Mm. It's so, so important. That yeah. It's one of the things that I have a, a program where I teach about YouTube. And it's like, that's the one thing that I talk about uh, mm -hmm. in that. And it's like, you have to conceptualize the, the almost the title and the thumbnail before even you do. moving forward. Even, even before filming. Because if it's not a good thumbnail and title, then... No one's going to click on it. You are absolutely right, mm -hmm. and it seems it seems like um, you you could want to say it's a little unfair. Like that's not fair, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, great, it's great content. It's great, you know. But but you are absolutely right. If you don't have something that mm -hmm. someone is going to want to click on, someone's going to want to have, you know, to to make them think, hey, this could be interesting. Oh, you, you just you, you miss the mark right out of the right out of the gate. Yeah. So what happened? So these videos here, I'll pull them up again. I mean, they have at this point, right? Uh, one mm -hmm. and a half million views, 1.2 yeah. million views. And this was, you said like 2017, about two years yeah. ago when you're like, okay, you know, this is, yeah. this is it. So what, what also happened as a result of these videos going viral? Like how else did you also change 
your strategy or maybe your schedule or even your, your business model? What, what changed at that moment? Yeah. Um, you know, so I was always, uh, so, so really even to this day, uh, mm -hmm. my primary goal is not to build a, an enormous YouTube, uh, channel. I I'm thrilled that it's growing so quickly mm -hmm. and so well. Um, but uh, my primary is really, uh, I, I teach courses, I teach, I have programs on my on my blog, and YouTube is by far the best vehicle to introduce people to my blog and, and my programs. And that is simply because it is video is the best vehicle for building trust and authority. Mm -hmm. And so you so YouTube allows you to showcase those those attributes. Yeah, so that was, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that because in watching your videos, you you know you have call to action to check out your programs. Mm -hmm. So, did you already have the programs existing prior mm -hmm. to doing these videos a couple years ago, and that was your intent for creating the videos? I did. I've I've mm -hmm. always that was always my start. Okay. Uh, I, the courses. I created a, uh, the courses. Yeah. I created a, a program, uh, a weight loss coaching program, mm -hmm. uh, and I've since um, I've produced a couple of other smaller smaller programs, like little twenty one day low carb challenges and yeah. things like that that are easy easy to access and kind of get your feet wet by just jumping in. Um, but I use YouTube to to let people know about about all of those. And I will tell you another perk uh, if some of the people that are watching are um, also bloggers mm -hmm. one one thing that I learned very early on from a, a wonderful guy that helped me set up my first blog uh, was that if you want to rank on Google a great format is to put a video on top of your blog post so Every time that I upload a, a blog post, mm -hmm. it has a video that goes with it. Mm. So do you embed the video into the post? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great strategy because now you are so much stronger on Google mm -hmm. and you also have that video on YouTube. Okay. So you get twice the benefit from that, that one major project, which YouTube videos can be major projects. Oh, yeah. So are you, so is your sole traffic source to your courses YouTube? Your YouTube channel? Uh, no, it's mm -hmm. um, it's one of my primary. Google's very. I, I do have a lot of Google traffic okay. because my blog um, is set mm -hmm. up the way it's set up with a you know with the blog post with mm -hmm. a, a video and and transcripts underneath it basically. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I also get some from social media. Um, actually, Pinterest is mm -hmm. very good for me. Yeah. Um, I, there again, I would have never really thought that would be the case, but diet and food related type things do very well on Pinterest. So I do drive a lot of traffic from there. I also have a, a fairly good uh, serving from Facebook. Gotcha. And so is all your traffic organic or do you pay for any traffic as well? I do not currently mm -hmm. pay for any traffic. Uh, however, we are working right now with my team uh, and we're actually going to be launching our first YouTube ad this week, I guess. Oh, interesting. But yeah. up until now, so so you would say you've probably been doing kind of this online thing with your courses about two years? Well, longer because yeah. you I have mean, a I've, blog. I've had them, you know, really, mm -hmm. it, I launched my first programs in 2012. Yeah. Uh, probably 2017, I said, all right, YouTube, this is the this is the vehicle. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to propel me to where I want to be. And that's when I really said, yep, I'm all in, you know, weekly vid videos, no matter what. And you know, go for great content. That's great. And so for this whole time, you haven't had to pay for traffic. You're right. Yeah, That's been, amazing. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't paid for for any. Um, and, and I'll tell you, Erica, uh, one thing that when I was thinking about our, our interview mm -hmm. that I really wanted to get across to people is that you re you just have to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And it does not have to cost you a dime, Erica. I I am trying to think back right now. I do not believe those first videos that you showed. Mm -hmm. I don't think they cost me a dime. So here's how I did them. Yeah. Um, I I needed I needed these videos done right. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, oh and and stay on that. Do you see that beat menopausal belly fat? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can click on that. that. That's one of my most popular. That is oh that just makes me kind of cringe right now. But yeah. oh, love it. Um, the the lighting. I had no idea what lighting was about. Look at the lighting. So yeah. the lighting. Me, right and you can barely see my face um, I'm outside on my porch 
Uh, you can hear birds in the background and kids. And, and if you notice, I don't have a mic on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because the camera that I was using was borrowed from my teenage daughter who happened to have a video camera. It didn't have an external mic. So I was... I was trying to talk loud enough so that, so that you could pick up my voice on the camera mic yeah. and not pick up the birds and the and the kids <laughs> behind. Me. Um, but my but my point is this video it's been seen what what was it 170 1.7 million. Million. million yeah um, you know tons of likes uh, mm -hmm. tons of shares <clears throat> the the thing is I I used a, a borrowed camera for that video yeah uh, I didn't have any lighting, so I didn't buy any lighting, right? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even know lighting was really that important. Yeah. I did, I did not have an, uh, to buy a microphone. Um, even, even if somebody is getting started, you can, you can do this on a, on a very small budget. And mm -hmm. for, as far as film editing, I'm almost certain I used uh, Filmora. Yeah. Uh, people can just Google. Uh, it, it's, I'm pretty sure there's still a free download for that. Uh, it's a video editing software. Uh, so you can like cut off the front, cut off the back. I mean, you know, if, if I can do it, with, you know, at 52 with my, you know, yeah. with my te technology, other people can do it. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't, it, you just have to gather that courage to start. To do it. Yeah. So why do you think though, this video, I mean, this was a while ago. I think you uploaded it mm -hmm. seven years ago, you said. Yeah. So um, it was some time ago. But why do you think this video in particular take off? And did it take off right away or did it not take off, say, for years later? The uh, Beat Menopause mm -hmm. by Starving You. Yeah, so if you, so there too, you look at this title, right? It's kind of intriguing. Mm -hmm. Beat, Beat Menopause uh, uh, by Starving Your Fat, what is it? Be I'm menopause, sorry. belly, belly fat, fat by starving your fat cells, not fat, yourself. Not yourself. Yeah, so it's a great it's title. It's an intriguing title. Mm -hmm. I think that had something to do with it. Um, did it take off right away? I think it was popular right away. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a perennial favorite for, for me. Okay. And, and, and Erica, I'll tell you, I even, I, I would... I've done an updated one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's it's performing great, but it's not it's not outperforming this one. Yeah. And you know the thing is, I look at it and I cringe now with knowing about lighting, <laughs> yeah. knowing about sound. But people rarely, like every once in a while, in the comments they'll say, you know, gee, well this would be better if I could, you know, if there weren't birds in the background. Yeah, yeah. And I get it. I mean, I, I'm like, I know, I know. I wish I could change that, but I can't. Do you think, though, I mean, the fact that I, I agree with you, it's like you just want to get started. But at the same time, you know, the landscape for YouTube was so different seven years ago. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know if do you think if you uploaded that kind of video today mm -hmm. without any kind of following, it would have taken off mm -hmm. the same way. I mean, it's hard to say, yeah. but. No, you do make a good, that is a good point. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. I really don't, I really don't know. Uh, that was, that was seven years ago and there were not, I'm um, not as many people on, on YouTube. Um, but still, uh, you know, uh, equipment, you know, you don't have to go top of, top of the line. Yeah. Uh, a, a video camera that will allow you, um, uh, or a video camera and then just buy a, a mic that is, that it has its own separate Mm -hmm. it's kind of a portable mic it attaches onto you and attaches onto your lapel and yeah then you download it um you you know i, I think with uh, video editing equipment i think you can do a lot still with the free versions like mm -hmm. film so yeah i do i do i do think you, ma you make a, a valid point that was many years ago and i probably jumped in at, at a good time for yeah sure. I, I think also you know i mean it also has to you know, the fact that your content is very good and you really know what you're talking about. And you, I think you're they're different than what else is on YouTube as well. You know, someone in your age with your authority, with your knowledge base, I'm sure there's a lot of women that are in their, you know, 50s that are looking for this kind of information. And I don't think there's that many people on YouTube that is that are talking about weight loss in your 50s and 60s or intermittent fasting or keto in that age. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. that... that that would be my interpretation as well as to kind of your success even. I, I think, mm -hmm. I think there's, I think that's valid uh, mm -hmm. because um, I, I do think that there is some uniqueness to me, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, everybody's unique, right? Yeah, and and of course. the thing is that you can't be afraid to 
showcase those unique qualities. You know, I am over 50. I mean, it's like, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not thrilled to be over 50. I think 50 is <laughs> great. Yeah. But you know, if I mean, if I could turn back time, I would like most most people. Yeah. But you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat that at, at all. I mean, I, you know, what it does for me is it allows me to relate to women who are at, at menopause or, mm -hmm. or past and uh, women who are over 50. Uh, one of my favorite videos that I did was just actually, I think it was the most recent that I just put out. Yeah, it was it. lose weight over 60. Okay. I see this and one right here. Yeah. One of the one of the reasons that it is absolutely one of my most treasured ones. I truly love this video. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is because my community helped me to put that together. Oh. So it's lose weight over sixty, right? I'm fifty two. Mm -hmm. So I, I I was looking for a way. I was like, well, how do I? put this video out there so that it's meaningful to, to people because, you know, it's one thing when you're in your fifties, it's another one you're in your sixties. Um, and fortunately I have a, uh, my coaching program has a forum where there, many of the members are over the age of 60. So mm -hmm. I put out in the forum, I said, Hey, I have this idea for a video that I'm doing for lose weight over. In fact, that's probably it right there. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, you wrote people. this in your post. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I just said, here's, Will, will you please share if you're over 60 will you please share what you see as the unique uh, obstacles at this age will will you then tell me what strategies have worked for you mm -hmm. and so this whole video is just quotes yeah. from those members oh, i just love it i mean they mm -hmm. you know they're so um it's so much more meaningful. You know, you can stand there and, and talk and talk and talk on a on a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. But when you have all of this contribution in one video, it was uh, it's uh, that that's that one's a treasured one for me for sure. So it sounds as if really um, it's like you've really honed in on your audience and yeah. you have this community and it sounds like you're 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 pulling from the women that have signed up for your course courses, right? Is that who you've gotten this, these quotes from and this feedback from? And then now you're really just kind of honing in and creating content for them. Yes, you do have to know who your audience is, for yeah. sure. You know, an interesting thing, Erica, when I was thinking about to what, you know, coming on your show, mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, it's funny to me, I don't really watch a lot of um, YouTubers that are doing the same thing that I'm doing now. Obviously, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Most people do, um, but I try to stay away from ones that are uh, on intermittent fasting, on low carb dieting, on on keto, mm. which I will talk about some sometimes, um, because uh, I find that I start parroting them. I mean, you know, and it, it's yeah. just a human nature type thing. You just start parroting them and. And a lot of times they're talking to a, a much different audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I seem to connect much better with people that are more like me, you know, yeah. so my age, um, female, but I also have a quite, you know, quite a bit of a male audience. I think it's something like a, a 70, 30 or something like okay. that. Okay, so 70% women and 30% yeah, men. Okay. Men. Yeah, the last time I looked at it, it seems like it's it's close to that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so you know, you, you have to stay unique. And that's a scary prospect, too, because then, <laughs> then you know that that was you on this video. And so, uh, you know, if, if there's any criticism to it, uh, it comes right back to you. So at what point did you realize who your audience was? Was it from the beginning? Were you targeting them? Or did it happen over time? Yeah, that that definitely developed over time. I, um, but it, it developed over time. Um, YouTube has really actually very good analytics. They mm -hmm. let you see uh, the, the gender. They let you see the age breakdown. So you really should pay attention to those those things. Um, and they can be intimidating because it's a lot to it, it's a lot to take in. You're looking at these stats and you're thinking, you know, how do I how do I make heads or tails of this? But yeah. if you just keep going in there. It doesn't matter if you understand it first. You'll you'll understand it a little better the next time. You'll mm -hmm. understand it a little better the next time. And so I started to see that that my audience was growing mostly in like the 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 uh, like forty to sixty five year old range, and I thought you know well I I mean that's me I'm I, that's right where I'm at um, now I've my early part of my career I I was actually teaching college courses so I actually started probably started talking more to like that type of an audience mm, interesting so like college students 
Yeah, well, that was where I got my kind of my start. I mm-hmm. used to teach uh, college courses, um, anatomy, physiology, science of nutrition were some of my my core mm-hmm. courses. Uh, so I had a you know a fairly younger audience mm-hmm. uh, at that time, um, and actually that maybe that's well, I'm I'm certain that's helped me quite a bit. But um, I think uh, you know anybody who's on YouTube or goes to YouTube mm-hmm. is really looking to learn something. And so I always have that in the back of my mind. And um, we never stop wanting to learn. I mean, I, that's a lot of the things I go to YouTube for. I want to yeah. learn new things. So YouTube is a, a how-to collection of videos often. I mean, there's the entertainment side for sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, in, in my area, it's it's really how do I do this? How do I do this? What do I eat? What do I, you know, intermittent fasting? Well, okay, I get it. But really? Well, aren't you going to be hungry? And, you know, so answer those questions for people in manageable little chunks and you give them a little bit of extra education, which is fun because now, now you have this little tidbit of information that you can like talk to other people about and, you know, use in the back of your mind to make your, your success even better. So I think it's fun. Yeah. So since your audience is, what is the age range of your, your demographic or your audience? I just looked at this the other day. I should mm-hmm. have it right under on my on the tip of my tongue, but it's it was um, I forget how they break it down, but it was mostly I think forty five to fifty five in that area was okay. definitely my highest. Wow. Um, and then th- like thirty five, um, like twenty five to thirty five, whatever the next lower breakdown would yeah. be there. And but I had a, a, a lot. I think they where do they stop it at? Is it like over like over sixty five or yeah. over seventy? something like that um but i had a good showing from from there too i love it that's so interesting so because one of the thing is you know because i work with a lot of women and helping them with their channels and and one of the things that i hear from women because there are more and more women that are you know a little bit on the older side that are coming into youtube and say i want to start a channel and then Mm -hmm. i'll hear people say well you know what i feel like i'm at a disadvantage because there's Mm -hmm. way more younger people that are watching youtube right and so I don't have as big of a like a pool to to get come from because there's not many people my age on YouTube. Oh have goodness. you ever experienced that? Have you found that to be a challenge, oh. or is that not even something you've even I, come across? I, I think that is a a, 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 a notion that mm-hmm. I don't think is held up by by fact. I think there are a lot of people uh, in in my age group. Oh my goodness, that are watching YouTube. Absolutely, mm-hmm. there's a huge audience opportunity there, and if you are in that age group and you're representing things that help that age group, oh, I think that's absolutely golden. I agree. I, I completely agree with you because that's my response. And it's like, well, maybe there's maybe there are more kids watching YouTube, right? But the reality <laughs> is, is like there's a lot of kids channels as well. Or there's a lot of people in their 20s on YouTube. There's not nearly as many women in their 50s and 60s that are t- on YouTube talking about issues that these women face and so it kind of evens out and you're right oh. if you're talking about their issues and yep that's golden the absolute wonderful thing about youtube mm-hmm. is that youtube is so vast that people gravitate to people that they can relate to mm-hmm. so you have a vast audience just because you are you you are you are you yeah. you're new age gender uh you know your unique uh background you have you have an audience out there tailored to you you just you just have to put those videos out and they just have to be able to find you and yeah uh, it, it's it's an it's a truly an equalizer mm. uh, you, you don't have to have so much money you don't have to have you know we all have those things that we perceive as our flaws um, you know, I was I, I was mentioned to you earlier. I think your audience might be interested to know that that I would describe myself as a, a shy introvert. Mm. I am not somebody who just charismatically goes out there and greets an audience. And yeah. uh, YouTube doesn't matter. Mm. And in fact, YouTube allows you you know that comfort zone where you put the video up. You can watch it before it goes live, right? So yeah, control, yeah. <laughs> control. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to worry, you know, we perceive these flaws that we have. Um, YouTube equals them all out. It honestly does. That's fantastic. And so right now, um, do you pay you you mentioned before, like, you know, really how important the title is and all that stuff. But do you 
Do you pay attention at all to your keywords when coming up with video topics or when crafting the titles? Is that something that you that you put some attention to at all, or is it just not really? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, so the latest things I've watched on YouTube is that, uh, and, and YouTube is now owned by Google, right? So mm -hmm. they kind of have the same rules. Uh, is that they're not their algorithm algorithm for. Mm -hmm who they're going to showcase uh, has gotten so big and complex. Very sophisticated. Yeah. Very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, that, um, they've kind of gotten away from just like hitting get keywords, you know? So in the early days it's it true. was a little bit easier because you could just say, you know, well, I'm just going to say this keyword like five times and mm -hmm. then pretty much assures that I'm at least going to get some views. Uh, I, it doesn't work that way anymore. So I'm definitely conscious of the keywords that I'm putting into the title and uh, making the title interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, what what I understand now is that YouTube can actually um, listen to your words. Like yeah. they, you know, I mean, if you look at the side of videos, like they've all got their transcripts. Mm -hmm. You know, so YouTube is is listening to your words. So I like to open my videos with by reiterating very strongly what this content is about. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. So if it's about intermittent fasting, um, you know, intermittent fasting is a, a great complement to to speed along weight loss. This video is going to go over three ways to do intermittent fasting. Right, you know, just something mm -hmm. like it is very succinct. It's very early in the video. And mm -hmm. I, I do think that there's maybe something to that. I, but I could actually be making that completely up. But I think I've heard that. So. No, it's, it's true. It's like yeah. I, I always tell I always tell my students, it's like, at th in your intro is so important for so many different reasons. One, it's going to hook the viewer. Secondly, mm -hmm. you do want to make sure you reiterate your title, you know, what it is that you're talking about um, yep. multiple times at the beginning of the video. Yep. Uh, and then obviously throughout the video, but you just kind of want to put a little bit of that extra emphasis on there. And then, yep. yeah, yeah, it's not as simple, like you said, as picking a keyword, throwing it in your title and your tags and you're good to go. Like there's so much more to yeah. it. There, there is, and mm -hmm. I, and I probably know the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, uh, there's so much more to learn, and yeah. and uh, you know, we talked about picking uh, topics, picking picking titles. That is sometimes the most challenging thing. What you know, picking video get, topics. Video, uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, you know, and and not you know, how am I not going to repeat everything that I've already said? How can I make this unique? How can I capture a new audience? Mm -hmm. um, because it's great, like when you get to a certain point in YouTube, you are you you have to you have a responsibility to the people that have subscribed to you yeah. and want new content. But you also have to go out and broaden your audience. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to two, two somewhat unique audiences there. Mm -hmm. you, you need to give the people that are subscribing to you that are helping you build your channel, you got to give them something unique every time that you upload a video. But you also have to capture people that haven't heard of you yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how am I going to get this video out to, to them? Yeah. So how do you come up with your video topics? And how often are you uploading right now? Once a uh, once a week. Now I once actually a have okay. a second YouTube uh, channel that I run with my with husband. Your husband, yeah, yeah, um, and uh, so we do that once a week too. So in general, I, I do two videos uh, a week. But on yeah. Doctor Beck Fitness, I do uh, I just upload once once a week. That could that could change. I, I him and haul back and forth between that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want my quality to suffer, and I'm yeah. busy with a lot of things. Um, so I, I I have that that fear, but. But, but for right now, I upload every Tuesday Tuesday morning. Um, what did you ask me? How you pick your video topics. So we, we've created kind of a system. Um, I like to uh, start thinking about what my video for the next for the next uh, week is going to be mm -hmm. on like like Friday or you know, and I kind of try to like narrow down a, a few things like, mm -hmm. oh, this would be good to talk about or I haven't talked about this before or um, and so I just get kind of like the ball rolling in my head. And um, then I just kind of let that stew over the over the weekend, like, oh, I could add this to it. And and I'll literally I'll have a, a notepad on my on my phone. And I'll like if I come up with an idea that could build on that build on that, I put it in there. And and then by Monday, it's pretty well like I've kind of got an outline in my head. And uh, then I usually kind of kind of spell it out in, in better, you know, more complete thoughts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then usually by Tuesday, I'm able to get a, a video uh, 
written and then uh, or, or uh, produced rather. And then it goes off to my video editor, who used to be me. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, then uh, she she creates uh, the wonderful videos that she creates mm -hmm. for me. Uh, and then that video uh, gets sent off to my blog post editor, who mm -hmm. uh, puts it on a blog post with and kind of writes out the, the blog under, underneath it. And that's kind of my system each week in and week out. I think that's that's great. So, where do you get the inspiration for your your video <laughs> topics? Um, a lot of it comes from what I'm s getting feedback from in the YouTube uh, comments. The comments, uh, yeah. A lot of it comes from the members of my my forum. Mm -hmm. uh, when you know they have questions, I'm like, yeah, that's a good question. I, how would I how would I create that into a video? Mm -hmm. um, so usually. The inspiration comes from a question that I get because obviously those are the things that people are interested in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's great because, you know, the more specific your audience is in a way, the easier it is to create content because then you there know is, what you're doing, you yeah. who you're doing it for. Sometimes, sometimes it just comes so quickly and, yeah. and easily. And then other times, of course, you know, you're kind of like, oh no, what am I going to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you mentioned something earlier that I, I do want to highlight, and I think this is really, really important for people because, you know, for you, you have a successful YouTube channel. You have over, I think at this point, you have, you know, 240,000 subscribers uh, at the time of this recording. And you said yourself, like, I know just like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, you know, the algorithm and all that stuff. And my philosophy is to be really successful on YouTube. You don't have to be an expert at the algorithm. And I, because I've interviewed so many women just in your position that are doing their thing, that are getting, um, you know, tens of thousands of millions of views on their video. And then they're like, oh yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. am I supposed to do this or not? Or with the tags or not? But you, you know, I think the real, ultimately what it comes down to is what you've, you've said, which is, a, you know, knowing your audience really well, serving them and just giving mm -hmm. them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that is, that's actually the, the best advice. Just don't get caught up in it. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> do what, do what, what has been working for you. When you do get an, too analytical, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you go into a danger zone for, for sure. Because now it's like analysis, paralysis by analysis, right? Isn't yes. that what they yeah. You know, and you can't do anything because it's like, well, that keyword's not going to work or that title's not going to work or mm -hmm. this stuff. No, are you kidding me? Um, you know, you, you, you have to just put it out there. It is the funniest thing. Like I will, I will have a video that I put my heart and soul into. Right. <laughs> and, and I think this is the best one ever. And it like goes so so. And, and then I'll put, I'll, I'll uh, be on vacation and I'll come home and I'll be like, you know, I'll be flying home on the airplane and I'll be like, oh, that would be a good idea for a video. And Monday morning I wake up, I film it and, you know, with hardly any, any work put in, you know, I mean, not, not I don't want to say that it was just, yeah. up, but, um, you know, it was just easy, easy peasy mm -hmm. and it just goes viral. So <laughs> sometimes crazy? overthinking is, is the worst thing that you can possibly do. It's so true. And it, yeah. Uh, have there been any videos that have, that you've uploaded that you're like, oh, like, uh, I didn't put any time into it or whatever. And then it just took oh. off. <clears throat> Yeah, you know which one? One one of those that you showed up there was yeah, uh, uh, the, the intermittent fasting one. Um, three ways to do intermittent fasting: easy, medium, and and extreme. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've I've gone back and I've looked at that and I've wondered why is that so popular? Um, and and I think that um, part of it is that I get right into the content. Mm. It, it's like you know, like I don't make you know, and and I did actually I learned. I learned from that video. That was an, a good thing for me to learn as, mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, and look, look at my, like, you know, it's your funny. whiteboard, <laughs> you know, I it just, it's, um, teacher mode, different, different yeah. Teacher mode. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, you know, people, people like, like that and they appreciate it. People do, they have busy schedules and, yeah. you know, as a creator, you feel like, that? yeah, six minutes, short video. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, and get, get right into the content. But you know, it, it's it's that battle between uh, being a creator and you want to be you want to be overly helpful. Sometimes you want to give them background mm -hmm. story. They don't really want background story. They want to know what are three easy ways to do intermittent fasting. That's yeah. what they're tuning into because that's what the video is about. So um, 
that I learned I learned from that and I think that is something I have carried along it's like introduce it mm-hmm. now I have my little intro thing you know that lasts like three seconds it yeah. tells people who I am yeah, and I then it is right into the content mm-hmm. yeah you know and it's a lot of people I think make the mistake of giving some info like all this background or like you know having like a oh this is what's going on with me today and especially I think it's I think it also you have to look at who like who the creator is right like if it's a very personality driven channel and then it's really about the personality then you know what people are tuning in to hear about that person's day or who that person is but like your channel is very it's very information driven it's like okay dr becky we love you but we don't really care about what's going on in your personal life we want to know the three different ways to do intermittent fasting right and you are aware of that fact I, I am. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that, that is, that is a very good point. So you, every, every comment that's coming out of my mouth mm-hmm. is because I have a channel that is a how to with a little bit of science behind it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but, but it's really teaching, it's a teaching channel. Yeah. So, um, you know, people aren't coming to find out, you know, how my dog's doing. Although on my yeah. second channel, she's pretty, fe- she's featured every oh, once okay. in a while. Um, but it, which is a little bit more personality uh, mm-hmm. driven because I'm able to do that with my husband. But um, now if you have a um, a channel that is is really much more in the entertainment, then people mm-hmm. gobble that up. They yeah. want to know they like, do. who you are and what what uh, you know, what your day is like and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So my comments, you know, really are for, you know, I, I have a health and nutrition channel and mm-hmm. that's where my heart and soul is. Yeah, definitely. And so you mentioned this a little bit um, about how you have an editor and someone who manages the blog, the blog, which I think is so smart because you obviously have this entire business that you're running, which is your co- your coaching, your courses, all that stuff. At what point did you hire the editor? How did you find her? How did that kind of pass off go? I know for some people, even at your size, it's like something like, oh, I don't want to like you know, it's taking up a lot of my time, but I want to keep control over that. How did that process go for you? Yeah, that's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because yeah, you're you are giving up some control. So here, Erica, here is a a secret to my success Mm -hmm. is my 24 year old daughter who is video editor. Oh, Uh, how fantastic. And, uh, you know, it just worked out perfectly uh, with with her. She does a a wonderful job. and and it came at a time like the job opportunity mm-hmm. came at a time. I mean, she would see me doing this, and she was always interested. And she would help. You know, she's a better YouTuber YouTuber than I am. Yeah. Like she understands YouTube much better. And uh, so so she um, she started kind of learning it and taking it over. So it was a nice, easy, gradual ex- ex- movement for me. And then yeah. she just made her an, an employee because she was doing such a great job. Um, then the uh, blog editor that I have uh, actually came through a, a company that I, I work with um, who is uh, uh, their, their name. They are a uh, more of a strategic type of a, a company, mm-hmm. but they have their emphasis in, in uh, building your web and making it secure and making mm-hmm. it like run fast and, and, uh, but they're also my strategic partner. Um, their their name is is Sparrow. They're in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, where I am. I don't know if they can be reached, but yeah. I would recommend them highly to anybody. They have been so instrumental in helping me to fortify my business, mm. um, on my online presence and everything. And uh, I got my blog editor through them. So uh, she's an independent contractor. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I, I give her, we've got a great schedule too. It, it, you just kind of, you come into a system, you yeah. know, I told here's, here's what I would like you to do. And then every week I send her, you know, Kelly, my, my daughter does the video editing. I send that over to Hannah who does my blog post. Mm-hmm. And, and that is, um, you know, she's got it, she's got it down. She's got a week to do it on, on her own, on her own schedule. So we, you know, we kind of keep that. It's nice, easy, you know, we don't overcomplicate things. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's, that's what happens. I mean, I know you have your channel with your husband, but if you decide to add another video to your week, it's just it's adding that work and it, 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 it becomes a little <laughs> bit more stressful, you know? It does, it does. So when yeah. you're, um, you know, with your, your, obviously it's your daughter, so you guys, you know, are close and, 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 and she probably knows a lot about what you're doing in your business. But for each of the videos, 
does she have like free reign on like exactly what to do with the editing? I noticed that you have a lot of text on screen. Do you kind of say, oh, I want this on this on? Or does she, is she at the point now where it's like you basically hand her the footage and the next week you're watching the video and like, oh yeah, that's great. She did a good job. You know, are you that yeah. hands off on it? Well it's it's a, a little of both mm -hmm. uh, so if it is something that has a little bit more of a, a scientific technical edge like i'm trying mm. to explain what nutrients are in this food or whatever yeah. she's going to know those types of things so i'll give her i say you know here's here's something that you could put on screen uh but i that's about it that's about the beginning and end of it mm -hmm. uh, other than that like if there's like she might throw some stock pictures into it from you know that she gets from yeah. like stalker like a one of the one of the picture sites um so she'll she throws all that in if there's music added that's her that's mm -hmm. her and her i don't that's great. get to that um it's nice to be able to you know when you trust somebody mm -hmm. which obviously I trust my daughter yeah of course <laughs> to yeah. Be in a good light so that's certainly helpful but when you trust them you do have to give them some uh creative license because that's the part that she really loves yeah it, it, creative outlet for for her and I, I love that I love that YouTube has allowed me to um, give her this opportunity yeah that's super Such cool you mm -hmm. guys work together so I want to talk a little bit about kind of the the business side of things and so because I do have a lot of women that listen to the podcast that have some kind of service program, something that they are selling yes. that YouTube is a vehicle for that. So how do you balance, you know, providing this content, this free content, which at the same time, say promoting what mm -hmm. you're doing without the promotion overtaking it? Like, how do you balance that? Or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that is a great question. Mm -hmm. And if you've watched my videos, you probably know at the end of my videos, I will always give a plug for one of my programs. Mm -hmm. But it's at I, I almost I mean, 99% of the time, it comes at the very end, mm -hmm. after very good content mm -hmm. that offered some help value. that is going to take that yeah, it offered some value. Mm -hmm. So that's how I balance it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do I mean, I put an end card at the end. So the video editor does that she puts that at the end of the video. And mm -hmm. it, it always has, you know, a, a place where people can click to go to my website and, and check out my information. Uh, but that is the balance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I rarely, rarely will get a comment that, you know, oh, this is just promoting something. And, and I mean, they come, yeah, but sure. I, I they're not very often because I put my emphasis first on making this of value to somebody who's going to come watch this and they have no interest in going and getting my program. But if you really like this and this was helpful and you want the whole thing put together for you, mm -hmm. this is where you can get it. That's great. And then so are you leading people to a free offer? I know that's like a strategy, you know, give them something mm -hmm. for free. Um, or is it just directly to purchase your program? Or what is kind of your exactly what your call to action is? And where are you leading them to? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's two avenues I, I pick. So mm -hmm. I can, I can either send them to a free video series that mm -hmm. I have. It's, um, um, I have a a unique strategy. It's called zero one two three. Mm -hmm. It basically stands for zero sugar, one large salad, one <laughs> two cups of or two cups of um, cooked vegetables, and three hours before bed. Stop eating. Right. Oh, so that's it's interesting. A, it's a, yeah. It's a, quick, it's a quick little. It's a wonderful, wonderful little strategy mm -hmm. to get started on your diet. Right. Yeah. So my zero one two three strategy. Well, it, I also then had years ago produced a four video series that walks people through exactly why this will help you get started mm -hmm. right in your diet. And then a, like the fourth video is, is what the uh, zero one, two, three really means. And so what, um, that, the, that video series is mm -hmm. housed on my blog. Mm -hmm. So I, it, not on YouTube, it's not okay. available on YouTube. Yeah. And, and people need to, you know, the only caveat is that they give I their email name and email mm -hmm. so that is a very good avenue for me um so uh, at the end of my U uh, youtube video if it feels right to just say um and hey if you would if you're just getting started and you need a, a system that's going to be successful right out of the gate for you i mm -hmm. recommend that you learn my zero one two three strategy uh it's perfectly free um, and I will link, I will provide links here in the video and down in the description area where you can learn, learn that for free. Um, then on some videos, 
uh, if I go a little bit maybe more in depth uh, and maybe it's on um, like low carb dieting and, mm -hmm. and I, I give some good tips, but you know, on YouTube, I mean, you can't do, you know, like really in depth, you know, type of things. You just give little tips mm -hmm. you know, so that people can digest it in, in small amounts. You know, then I might say, you know, uh, if, if you would, uh, if you're interested in putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together, mm -hmm. I have a, a Freedom Health Weight Loss Coaching Program that uh, I will point you to and you can learn more through the links provided here on the video. Yeah. That's great. And so on average, say on an average month, like how many email, new email subscribers are you getting from from that? Uh, from from that? Well, from well, YouTube? It's hard, yeah, it's hard to say. You can't start to say just from right. YouTube or if it's Pinterest or whatever, uh, but... Yeah, um, I, I will. I, I don't know. I don't know how I can. I don't know uh, if I have that like breakdown. That would be mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. You know? um, but I, I don't think um, my blog statistics allow me to see like exactly how. Well, I, they they do show me who where the traffic comes from, but I mm -hmm. I don't have that where it would like specifically break down that. I will tell you mm -hmm. if I have a video that goes viral, uh, my subscribers to my free. 0123 strategy go through the roof. Um, so I, I do know that they that it that YouTube has a direct impact on my email subscribers list. And what would that be like if it's something that is taking off? Is it like, you know, thousands a day, hundreds a day or like what, what you're like, you're looking at you're like, Oh, my gosh, like, what could that lead to? So I mean, it's not unusual to to get if if I'm really hitting something mm -hmm. to get 300 subscribers a day on on that mm -hmm. from my email. Yeah, that Wow. Or, you know, then there's a good chance that a lot of them are coming directly from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but on a normal average day, uh, about 100 subscribers on that free list. And that would encompass YouTube, Google, mm -hmm. Pinterest. Um, Facebook, yeah, Pinterest, Facebook. Instagram, those types of things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's I mean, 100 a day is amazing, considering you haven't even paid for any traffic yet or ads. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and I appreciate the fact that you say that because yeah. there's my na na how naive I can be yeah. in, uh, in YouTube. Um, I I was always like, you know, oh, I should probably figure out how to do YouTube ads, but that uh, seems kind of complicated. So <laughs> yeah, that sounds like you say you're going to do YouTube ads this week, but I'm like, why? What what do you why do you feel you need to start paying for ads at this point? Consider you kind of dominated all these other social platforms. Uh, I. I will listen to any advice that you have on that. I, I don't, um, because I thought, well, we should give this a shot. I say, it doesn't and, hurt to try and see, right? Maybe a hundred yeah. could turn into a thousand a day for exactly. not that much money, you know? Yeah. And, and I would like to target, um, certain groups mm -hmm. and, and that, and that, uh, YouTube ads do seem to allow you to do that yeah. for, distinctly. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, that's part of it. Um, you know, it's, it's really all about, just learning the ropes on this. Mm -hmm. And honestly, so many of the things that have like worked for us or not worked for us, we just jumped in and we tried it. Yeah. And we evaluated afterwards because you can, like we said, you can overanalyze it and then never do it. And yeah. who knows? Yeah. And I mean, it's just, that's, a, it's incredible because you've just, it's like the, the, the modern age of creating a business online and, you know, reaching mm. thousands or millions of people. It's like, you know, t even 10 years ago, 50 years ago, you couldn't, oh. you couldn't even do that. You're limited to who you were teaching. Like you said, you were a professor. You're limited to those yep. 40 students or whatever it was. Oh. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is such a blessing. And I will tell you, it's funny. Um, it's one of the hardest things for people, I think, uh, to get across that you are speaking to a now a worldwide audience. Yeah. Uh, so we have, you know, we've gotten to know a few people like in our area, like where I live, mm -hmm. uh, that are interested, have been interested in, in YouTube. Um, yeah. One one guy, for instance, we, we kind of helped him kind of get started, gave him a couple of shout outs and things like that. Mm -hmm. The thing that I would always say to him was, okay, that was good. I mean, his videos were great right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I said, okay, that was good. Now, remember, you're talking to everybody, yeah. and, you know, and he, so he would do something that was like, like focused on something in like central Pennsylvania, which, oh, is, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and I would say, well, that's, that's great for a central Pennsylvania audience, yeah. but there's people in Australia who are mm -hmm. watching this. There's people mm -hmm. in the UK who are watching Everywhere. this. Everywhere. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, think, 
thinking bigger. Oh, one of the hardest things when we expect, especially at at uh, at my age. So he was in his fifty. He's in his fifties mm-hmm. as well. And so we spent our lives in traditional business. Yeah, was not far reaching. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now you know it's I I just oh I love when people would put in the comments you know you know. Uh, thanks so thanks so much from you know from the UK or you know I, I love this you know in, in Australia you know I just I I absolutely love that because it it's that reminder it brings me back to that yeah. space of, this is truly an amazing time to be in business yeah yeah it really is I agree it's really an amazing time all right so we are nearing the end of the ep- the interview and I have what's called my power hour segment so it's i'm going to ask you some questions and just real quickly off the top of your these are the same questions i ask everybody off the top of your mind just kind of say the answer so what would you say have been the defining moment of your youtube career um i would say those two videos in 2017 Mm -hmm. and thinking wow that's a lot of views (laughs) over a (laughs) million and a half yeah wonderful at the same time yeah yeah. What is the hardest part for you about being an influencer on YouTube? That I am uh, an introvert. I like to be in my pajamas and uh, slippers. And that is how I like to spend my day. So uh, putting yourself out there mm-hmm. and being open to, you know, possible criticism. That is that is tough. And I, I wish I had, you know, a magic ball that you could just erase erase things um 99.9 of the comments and things are wonderful but you are opening yourself up i mean yeah. you know and how do you overcome that um i talk to my husband <laughs> <laughs> and i let it go yeah. i you know i i like i said eric i i wish i had a, a secret way that i get rid of it it gets yeah. easier and easier when you can turn around and the next comment is wonderful mm-hmm. but i'm I, i'd be lying to say it doesn't hurt sometimes yeah you know just I say mean, cool. even you, you, like you said, you're 52 at your age. Like, it's like, yeah, I'm sure comments, even, you know, when you're, you're confident, you said you're married, you, you've got yeah. things going on. They still hurt. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's tough. People, people, I think want to, to kind of knock some people down. And, yeah. and like, I get it. I get it. I don't know. You let it go. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube influencers, they're an easy target, unfortunately. They are. Mm-hmm. They are. But you know what? That oh, if if that lets somebody not, if that makes somebody not do their first video, that's tough. Don't yeah, don't, don't don't let that happen. Because I'll tell you, Erica. You know, I mean, think about your comments. I'm I'm, I'm certain. You know, you're a very pleasant person to listen to. They are not overwhelmingly negative. They're, if anything, over overwhelmingly positive. Mm-hmm. And you just have to stay focused on those. And I, you know, give a little tip out to, to people if they are afraid of that. Hey, you can always hide a person's uh, YouTube yeah. comments. <laughs> if they're exactly. being really sorry, yeah, Welcome. you just push a little button and it, and it hides, mm-hmm. you know, they, mm-hmm. they won't be public anymore. So, yeah. you know, you, you get some control. Yeah. Don't, don't let that stop you. Perfect. Uh, if you were to get started today on your YouTube channel, what would you have done differently? I think at first I was probably focused on like, uh, you know, promoting my product. I think I would focus mm. on just giving great content mm. because the, the, uh, the arena that we're in now in 2019, when we're filming this, um, is really, you have to, you have to set yourself apart with some quality content. So I think mm. my, my focus would have been much more on, just giving, 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 and yeah. and you'll you'll receive when you know you you've got a good housing of uh, of uh, subscribers People. out there. Mm-hmm. What are you most proud of when it comes to your channel? I I, I have to say I love 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 like I, my heart gets filled with joy when I see the comments. You know I've lost fifty. 50 pounds and since January and you know it's because of you you know watching your channel and, yeah oh my gosh you know, I've, I've gotten off these medications and I can't believe it I'm 60 years old and I would have never thought this you know and you know I just you know I I believed in what you were saying oh Erica it is like there are times you know we talked about the snarky people there are mm-hmm. times you sit and you read your comments and you could almost burst into tears it's yeah. so wonderful And that's the thing. It's like you're always going to have the negative Nancys out there. You know, you're always going to have the people out there that are just like just 
negative and they're going to spew their negativity. <laughs> but if you allow that to stop you, then the beauty yeah. of changing somebody's life and making an impact. And like you said, those amazing people that's lives are changed. Like yep. that, that would never happen. So it's kind of like, you have oh. to look at that and be like, that is so much more important than a dumb negative comment here and there. Oh, oh. at the end of the day, you are, you can block those negative yeah. ones out. You just yeah. sit and just reminisce on the good ones. Yeah, absolutely. What has been the biggest mistake you've made on your YouTube channel? Which one uh, of the of the very, very many? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I will say when I started to just t to really take off, mm -hmm. uh, one thing that happens, and I'm sure you've experienced this, mm -hmm. is that you start to get inundated with emails offering you opportunities, right? Oh, yeah. So I was looking forward to that. I thought, you know, this is cool. I could get like all this, you know, everyone's going to send me their stuff. And yeah. You know, well, what happens? They send you their stuff with an obligation behind it. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I so there's been a couple of uh, things that like in my early days of getting promotions, like I was kind of caught up in like the excitement of like, boy, this really makes me feel legit that yeah. somebody send me this item. And, you know, but um, I don't want to be a puppet and have to uh, prom now promote your product that mm -hmm. that really is not sharing a whole lot of value to my my base yeah. mm -hmm. um and and it, it just kind of um I, I did that a couple of times and it felt phony and I just hated I just hated it to be quite honest I think I did that twice and I don't think I have those videos like public anymore mm -hmm. they just didn't feel they didn't feel authentic uh, yeah yeah um so I, I I shy away from that so that's that's something it's that a good I, lesson a learning experience mm-hmm what is the best decision you've made about your channel? To go for it and do weekly videos. Mm -hmm. And that for some for some of the people you interview, they they might do daily videos. Yeah. Uh, or you know more often. For for me, weekly videos fits my personality. It um, it allows me to grow at a, a pace that I enjoy. Um, but just going for it, being consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, that is absolutely the best thing that really, you know, now people anticipate my video coming out, you know, a weekly and, and it's just, you know, I've gotten the system down. Mm -hmm. So that consistent effort for sure. Yeah. Um, what is the best opportunity you've received as a result of your YouTube channel? Building my business. Mm -hmm. I, I think it has been uh, the way that I got found and my programs have gotten found in the sea of you know, the internet. So mm -hmm. it has, it has provided me with um, a platform that I can't imagine how I would have gotten it any other way. Yeah. And last question, what is your superpower? Meaning what is something that comes to you very naturally um, that you really don't have to work towards that has contributed to your success on YouTube? Being able to explain uh, complex things in layman's terms, I love mm -hmm. doing that. I love yeah. taking, you know, because nutrition and diet, I mean, they're complex. I love being able to not just say that this antioxidant isn't here. I like to explain what an antioxidant is and, mm -hmm. and you know, relate it to like, uh, you know, fighters in, inside your body and stuff like that. You know, I, I love I love to, to take complex things and break them down. And I tend to be very good at that. Yeah, I mean, you're a teacher at heart, and yes. you've been able to now bring that talent, bring that passion to a huge audience. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah well, great. Dr. Becky, this has been so wonderful. It's been wonderful yeah. talking to you. And thank you so much for sharing kind of the highs and the lows of your YouTube career so far. Mm -hmm. I know you've got lots, lots in store. I'm sure there's just tons more that um that's coming your way for people that are new to you where can they find you well uh if you google dr becky fitness you'll find my blog uh it, actually if you go on youtube and you google dr becky fitness you'll find me as well my youtube is actually becky gillespie uh but just put in dr becky fitness that's a little bit easier to understand and type in so <laughs> you can find me on google or youtube that way Perfect. Yeah. And, and if you're watching this on YouTube, then comment below and, you know, ask any questions or whatever. And um, we'll be here to answer them for you. And then I'll have all the links in the show notes um, on the website and then also here on YouTube. Well, thank you so much. It's been yes. wonderful. <laughs> That was, uh, that was a nice way to kind of get my head around uh, this whole business. So that was fun for Good. me as well. All right. Bye.
Bye-bye.